Good afternoon, everybody. I hope the week has treated you extremely well. Uh, even though it's a holiday shortened trading week, we have a lot to cover in this week's video. We're going to take a look first and foremost at the new all-time high that was put in on the NASDAQ. The S&P 500, the Dow Jones are right behind, uh, knocking on their all-time highs. The Russell's still an extreme lagger um, throughout the year, and it's still almost 10% off of its all-time highs. So we're going to discuss the major indexes. What we're really going to pay attention to today is actually the transportation sector, a couple of major transportation transportation players put out earnings here this week. Um, so we're going to take a look at what was actually said and what that could mean for the overall economy. And we're also going to take a look at the smart money, dumb money uh, index which is a sentiment gauge and smart money, dumb money, essentially meaning commercial hedgers versus uh, small speculative retail traders. Um, and we're going to discuss where we're at there because we're actually at an extreme and that could certainly have an impact moving forward. So first and foremost, let's talk about the NASDAQ. We did go get new all time highs here today, though we have not been able to hold on to it. Uh, we pretty much tagged that right there at the open and it has been profit taking across the board. Um, in the indexes today. The S&P 500 still a couple of ticks uh, away. At this moment, we are um, you know, about uh, 40 points off of those all-time highs. We take a look in at the uh, Dow, uh, still taking a look in there uh, oh, a little ways off. And like I said, the Russell really far off of its, uh, of its all-time highs. Um, if I clean this drawing set out and just we just take a quick look at this, you can just see the major resistance level is really that 1600 level on the Russell. And uh, we just have not been able to get above that um, since back in last October. So uh, that, of course, has been an ongoing concern of mine. When we take a look at where risk in the market is, risk in the market tends to be uh, in those small to mid cap companies. They outperform. That means uh, money managers and investors are really feeling confident about where things are going and willing to put their capital into areas where uh, there is essentially more risk versus blue chips, which typically tend to be safer. Um, and the fact that this has led us to the downside last year and has lagged so hard this year certainly has me concerned for where we are moving here in the, um, in the next few months. Now, it looks like uh, we're going to get those new all-time highs across the major indexes, um, but where, does, where do we go from there? Are we going to be able to hold on to those? Are we going to have a rosy, beautiful, continuing grind higher rest of the year? Or underneath the surface, do we still have some economic concerns? Well, the thing I want to talk about first is the Dow Jones transports. Now, they ran right up into their really important resistance uh, level that was put back in on December 3rd. And if I actually extend this drawing out here to the left, you can kind of see uh, this whole zone up in here is major resistance on the transports. And as we talk about the two areas that I really like to pay a lot of attention to to gauge really the health of the overall economy is the transportation space and the semiconductors. The semiconductors gave us that beautiful signal. Um, last week and have continued through um, and continued to make new highs. And that is bullish. Semiconductors are another gauge of risk in the overall market. When semiconductors are doing well, technology is moving forward, businesses are buying new equipment, uh, which typically tend to be those semiconductor uh, pieces, and that is good for the overall health of the economy. Then the transports are the other key to the picture. Right? They confirm when the transports are rocking and rolling higher, they confirm that goods are being shipped around the economy. And we have not seen them really follow through and have as strong of a move to the upside as we have seen out of the semiconductors, which has just made new highs. So one of the major U.S. trucking companies put out earnings this week, and it was a big miss. And underneath the surface inside their quarterly filing and also on their conference call, um, they had some very negative things to say, saying things like warehouses were completely full. The sales to inventory ratio has crept up a bit again. Um, and when they talked about the story so far for the year, they said January was outright weaker. February got hurt by the weather, but when services began, um, to improve, we did not see a snapback in customer demand in March, which was our biggest surprise and frankly really led us to missing those expectations. So that is a little bit concerning when we see one of the major trucking companies uh, putting out uh, earnings that are a complete miss and saying negative things like that. However, today, one of the biggest rail companies put out their earnings, and they did well. They beat expectations and moved to the upside. So maybe we're just seeing goods moved in a different way. 
Um, but I think that that mixed message that we're seeing out of the truckers and out of the um, railways here is something we need to pay attention to moving forward to see if one of those two areas in the transportation space can give us a much clearer picture of what is likely going on underneath the surface. Now, let's talk about smart money and dumb money. Um, there is an uh, indicator that we pay attention to, and that is really taking a look at the smart money being commercial hedgers um, and large institutional players and the dumb money, typically mom-and-pop retail traders. And what we see when we look at um, the sentiment readings is that during the meat of the move, the dumb money is correct, right? They capture the majority of the move. But at the turning points, they're almost always wrong, right? They're too confident at highs. They're too scared at lows. And during the actual move itself, they're positioned, uh, you know, the right way, essentially, so to speak. But at those turning points, it's very, very important to pay attention to. Well, the dumb money confidence here is extremely high. We haven't had a reading this high since back in 2009. Now, the interesting um, thing, when we look at the really, really high confidence ratings, they're coming out of recessions, right? They're back in 2003, we get a number of these readings, and we get a number of these readings here in 2009, early 2010, right? Now, we had a, a large sell-off last year, but we did not have a recession, and so the first time really in 20 years that we're getting this high of a confident um, reading and not coming out of uh, you know some sort of horrible economic recession. Now these um, these readings typically do not bode well for the midterm of the overall market. Again, a year later, um, you know it's it's uh, it's positive, but when we look out a month, three to six months later, right, this is skewed heavily in the uh, bear's favor. Right, the risk to reward is negative, and the percent of times that we're actually positive after seeing a reading like this is uh, pretty uh, low, 32%, uh, 37%, with average drawdowns of 5% and, and average upside moves of a couple of percent, right? Um, and, you know, part of the reason why you could you can really think through these readings themselves is because after we came out of a recession, think people were very, very confident on things moving forward, and then you have a little bit of reality set in, you get that essentially pullback, and we're seeing that pullback here inside those, you know, one to th three to six month type of readings, right? And because you're leaving a recession, typically a year later, uh, two years later, three years later, you know, very positive for the overall market. So when we've taken a look at a lot of these different studies here, you know, over the last few weeks, what has really been very clear to me is that one to three month period, you know, out in the future from now, the risk to reward really is kind of skewed negatively. Um, in a lot of different studies that we've taken a look at. And the short term and the long term are both kind of skewed on the bullish side of things. And this is what has made this market so very difficult here is, is that in the short term, things look good. In the midterm, especially when we look at some of the economics uh, that are going on, we have some very rocky things going forward. And then the long term future still looks extremely bright. So what does that mean? That means now is kind of the time to be cautious. We've had a heck of a run higher, um, that beautiful V-shaped rally back to new all-time highs, which were made on the NASDAQ, and we're very, very close on the S&P and the uh, Dow Jones. And really the, uh, the kind of the message that all of these studies have really put out is it's really time to kind of be cautious moving forward, um, you know, protect some of the gains that we've got. Um, be very careful um, for those potential pitfalls, which we have kind of laid out in some of these studies um, over the last few weeks. I hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic uh, Easter weekend. I will see you guys next week. Take care.